This video takes place in Russia, however, it does not take place in either Moscow nor St. Petersburg. Instead, for this video, we are as north as you can possibly get in Arctic Russia. Guys, greetings from the Arctic! <laughs> I'm in Salyakhard in northern Russia and it's summer! And this is what summer looks like! Oh man, it's freezing! Today, what I want to do is show you, or at least try to show you what it's like living in such a place. We're just north of the Ural Mountains, in the capital of the Yamalonyenets Autonomous Okrug. Wow, look at this! A freaking mammoth! The mighty Ob River, one of the longest and main rivers of the whole of Siberia. And just to give you guys the idea of how remote this place is, there are no roads leading to Salihard. In fact, in the whole territory of the Yamalonyenets, which is massive, it's about the size of Germany, there's only one asphalted road leading out of Salihard into a village on the outskirts of Salihard. There's no railway, there is a train leading up to as far as Labitnangi though, which is a small town right on the other side of the river Ob, but then you have to cross the river in order to get to Salekard. How do you do that? During winter, the river is frozen, you can ride your car from Labitnangi through the river into Salekard. During summer, there are regular ferries. In between, when the ice is not so thick, you have hovercrafts, which are those things that you see right there. The people of Salihard refer to the rest of Russia as the mainland. And just like in the mainland, the best way to get around is via minivans functioning as city buses. I took one to travel from the shore of the river Ob to downtown Salihard. Wow, my first ride on an Arctic bus. How cool is that? Guys, I want you to take a look at this bus stop on the main road of Salihard. This is no Soviet bus stop, but it's actually interesting because you see here, you have the usual bench on the outside under this roof of the bus stop. But then you have to think that in winter, when it gets to minus 40 and minus 50, people, the people of Salihard can just enter this and uh, yeah, find the shelter from the cold. So cozy, right? Minus 40 in the winter. You don't wait for any bus on the street. You're going to die. Are you crazy? So that's why the administration of the town of Salekar built the things. Interesting, right? As I was way underdressed for the weather, I couldn't stay outside for extended periods of time, so I decided to call a random taxi and strike a conversation with the driver just to gain some interesting insights on life in the Russian Arctic. Where are you from, tourist? Ah, uh, you guess. I'm from where? You guess. Not Turkey. No, it's a country, Italy. Я з Дагестана сам. Дагестана? А почему ви так на севере? Да, да. А как жити здесь? Как сказать? Холодно. Холодно уже привыкли как бы. Ну как бы это раньше лучше было, сейчас хуже. Почему? Уровень жизни там, это зарплата уже людей падает. Вы, вы считаете, что это должен быть самый богатый район? Тут должно быть а, идеальные вот дороги давно. Ага, понимаю. Бы, да? Ну, может, и... я думаю, что из-за погоды трудно как да, не, ремонтировать не, не. и все, все и можно. держать. Эти, все можно, эти да? дома деревянные, ага. которые каждый год падают, ага. людям не выдают. Это же... А бюджеты огромные города. Ага. А, а куда? А куда деньги? Надо у них спросить. Понимаю. А как жить здесь без тепления? Надо, да, надо без тепления. Север. Температура зимой минус 40, минус 50 бывает? Да, конечно. Вау. Конечно бывает.
when it's winter in minus 40 and minus 50 it's actually much easier to walk around the streets of Salihard and that is because the snow and the ice are much more compact and uh, you can walk on it as if it was concrete basically but in spring and in summer when the ice and the snow melt this is what you're left with and of course my sneakers my Jordans are not the best shoes for this kind of weather <laughs> Whoa! Here it says Arktiskea Ulitsa, which means Arctic Street. And uh, you might notice, wow, look at this. <laughs> That's quite a big pond. And anyway, as I was saying, you might notice that the colors of the buildings, of the houses around Arctic Street, are all very vivid and bright. And that is because you have to think that the winter here is absolutely miserable. Not just for the weather, but also because the sun doesn't rise for around a month in the depth of winter. So, this is how the town administration has been trying to tackle the really high depression diagnosed rates around the town of Salehard. Yeah, by coloring houses and buildings of bright yellow, pink, orange. Yeah, there you go. Guys, if you ever have those moments when you feel blue, which can happen from time to time, of course, and maybe you feel like no one needs you, you don't know what your place in the world is, well, just remember that at least you're not a freaking open-air basketball playground in the Russian Arctic. Look at this. <laughs> I reckon this is usable only maybe two weeks in August tops. <laughs> There are always two sides to the Russian Arctic. One is the one of the normal people living here. People that are struggling due to the climate, the harshness of the weather and isolation. And then the other side is the rich side. The side of the money that are spent every year by the government. The money that are brought in by the gas industry and natural resources, Gazprom. As is common in every Arctic region in Russia, the average salaries in Salihard are amongst the highest in the country. Gazprom, the Russian state-owned natural gas producer, is highly active in the region and its wages attract many workers from all over Russia. Many aspects of life in this region are very often subsidized by the federal government. However, people who don't work for Gazprom are, for the most part, out of luck. That's why money is spent on buildings like this, the concert hall, the Vestavachny center, there's a museum over there, there's a restaurant on top of those two towers over one of the main bridges of Salihard and this is the same town as the wooden derelict buildings where the other people live in, the people who are not working in the gas industry. This is the Russian Arctic for you. You see, babushkas are lovely, even here in the Arctic when you ask for directions. This is pretty much as remote as you can get in Russia, but still, you are going to find a Lenin statue. Look at this! I wonder how Vladimir is not cold with his autumn coat. We can already see that the roses that were laid in front of Lenin were pushed aside by the wind. Let's pay him some justice. Yeah. Oh my god, it even hurts touching things in this weather, in this cold. Hello, Lenin! Right in front of what I think is the old house of culture. Brrr, guys, you know what? The cold is really starting to get to me. 
I'm absolutely freezing and my feet are soaking wet. So you know what? I think I'll find myself a place to eat. And this one looks just right. Grill house, what do you reckon? I mean, my feet will still be wet, <laughs> but at least I'll be a bit warmer. Let's check this place out. <laughs> it's right in front of a aftamoika of like a car wash. Looks promising. You know what, this place is actually kinda nice. Look at it, especially compared to the outside. Grill house, look at this menu. So let's check out this menu. And let's see what we have. I have to say the prices don't look too cheap. And that is because at the end of the day, the cost of living in the Arctic is not as cheap as the rest of Russia because pretty much every single food, apart from maybe reindeer meat, you have to import it. And this is why even the pasta, look at it. These are Moscow standards, 420 rubles for a carbonara, that's more than four pounds. I don't know what I should go for. I mean, I've had reindeer meat before. I'm not the biggest fan. I reckon actually fish is typical of this area. So we'll see. If not, I'll just go for some pasta. All right, so pasta with seafood. I mean, it's mostly cheese and pasta and not that much seafood. <laughs> but I'm sure it will be fine. I mean, I'm absolutely hungry. And with this cold, the problem is that my lips are hurting just so much. I need some Vaseline, <laughs> please. Oh man, mm. I definitely do need to buy myself some lipstick, but yeah, bon appetit. What I for? Sorry? Asking for help in finding a hotel. И просто, а, я не знаю, а, ваш коллега говорил, что это неправильный адрес. Можно понять, почему это же правильный адрес? Это правильный адрес. Wow, what a lovely bunch of people! Now, what is left for me to do is go and find this hotel. I mean, the sun isn't actually going to set. I'm not worried about daylight, as, I mean, you have 24-7 daylight in Salihard this time of the year. I'm more worried about myself freezing to death. Especially considering that I have two pairs of socks and my sneakers and both my socks and the sneakers are very wet. So, let's go find ourselves some rest. Well, that's one hotel I could have stayed at. Gastinica Arctica, Hotel Arctic. Only problem was, it was too expensive for me. Something like 70 pounds per night, way too much. All right, so I'm not at the hotel. Truth be told, I haven't got any footage from the hotel. Reason being, I found out that walking around in sub-zero temperatures with wet feet wasn't the brightest idea, and I felt terribly sick afterwards. I had a really rough couple of hours, but anyway, it doesn't matter, I'm all good now, and I've still got a lot of footage coming up from the Russian Arctic, so stay tuned, I'll see you next time. Cheers, thank you, bye.